I'm part of Epic PSA slash Aviana. Um, we recently merged back in February, um, so now we are one company together working to, to help these kiddos out in the greater Austin area and across the state of Texas. Um, so I want to talk with everybody today about the different lines of business that you can find um, out in the community for children with special needs. Um, it's always it's always parent and patient driven. Um, you always have your own choice of who you use. So if anyone says, hey, you should use this, you don't have to. Um, there's multiple companies for everybody, um, for every line of business. It's, it's up to you guys on who the best fit is. Um, so I don't want anybody to think that since I appreciate you guys letting us host it tonight, um, if, if we're not the fit, then, then we'll help you find somebody who is, because um, we just want to make sure you guys are taken care of um, for whatever you guys are looking for. So um, I'm going to try to ask questions. I got stuff to give away too, because everybody likes to listen to me when I have stuff to give away. Um, <laughs> it's more fun to raise your hand and talk a little bit instead of just listening to someone. Um, so it might not be as interesting, sorry, um, but I'll, I'll kind of take you guys through through the gambit of, of how it works from what we call, as we call it from our side, referral all the way to start of care or first treat, whatever you, whatever you prefer. Um, so we'll start small and kind of work our way up um, with the interval nutrition side and, the, and the, what they call DME, um, a lot of times stands for durable medical equipment, um, but what, what we do specifically um, at Epic and Aviana and PSA is we provide the interval nutrition, the diapers. You can also find from companies here locally like Travis Medical Supply, um, AMP Quality Care and Medical Plus Solution, Medical Plus Supplies, sorry. Um, they do what we call bent metal, wheelchairs, walkers, standers, everything like that. Um, so as far as those, if you have any questions about, about the bigger stuff, I'd have to divert you to them because um, I'm not educated on it, but I can help you with the diapers, the formula and things like that. <clears throat> so with all of them, it has, in order for us to get stuff done, it has to be, it has to come from a doctor. You can, if you need to do anything, you can, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> I got ADD anyway, so I'm gonna be all over the place. Um, so it all has to come from a, from a physician uh, or a nurse practitioner. We have to get a referral, an order from the doctor. Um, so the qualifications for everything, um, as far as the diapers go, if you're gonna get incontinence supplies, there have to be two things that happen. One, um, the patient has to be at least four years old because the way Medicaid sees it, um, any child from birth up to age four they probably, there's a good chance that they're, gonna, that they're not gonna be continent because they're babies, they're little kids, they're still in the potty training stages. Once they hit age four, if we have another diagnosis, um, could be anything, developmental delay, all the way up to something more severe, cystic fibrosis, cerebral palsy, to where that will qualify them as well for the incontinence supplies. What that includes, diapers, and there are multiple kinds. You can get Pampers, there's Cuties, there's Prevail, all kinds of stuff for all ages. Um, you can get bed liners, so if they're sleeping in their own bed, then you have that extra protectant, protector. Um, also might be called chucks as well. If you hear someone say chucks, that's the same thing. Um, just another layer in case they in case they use the bathroom Do you guys do the reusable ones or only the disposable ones? So ours are only disposable. Um, that for, for me, the DME counts as disposable medical supplies unless you're talking about a pump and the IV pole. We don't throw those away. Um, everything else will throw away or is, is you're able to throw away um, so it, as far as that's as everything as far as the diapers um, a lot of times private insurance will not cover this um, Medicaid does however any form of Medicaid that you have can cover these supplies any company in the Austin area is is can try to get it covered we will always submit to insurance if it's private insurance to try to get it covered you never know sometimes it depends on the plan but from what we've seen most of the time, it's not gonna get covered um, just with private insurance. But if you have a Medicaid as a secondary or primary, we can use that for it. Um, second thing, stepping up a little bit is the formula. Um, it, all the companies that I know in Austin, ha you can get any kind, whether it's Nestle products, it could be Abbott, um, could be Gerber, any of the, any kind of formula that you guys want. Cake Farms is a big one these days. Nourish is another one, which are blenderized formulas if you're getting them through the G-tube. Um, any, anything all the way down to Pediasure, um, which is pretty simple. There are places if the, if the children are age five or under, you can go through WIC. 
which is perfectly fine. Um, that's, a, that's absolutely a resource that you can use. Um, the only difference is with WIC, you have to go to see a nutritionist in order to get the order. And sometimes they might not supply as much as the child needs. What we've seen a lot are especially with tube fed patients, whether it's NG tube or G button, they might not get enough that's covered. There is a way to do it and it's through companies like us, like URS, um, AMP, any disposable medical supply company. They can help you with that and cover the difference or all of it if that's what you choose. Um, the advantage of using someone that is a private company is that they can ship it to your house. And every 30 days, they'll send a shipment and it'll come directly to your house. You don't have to see a nutritionist. The doctor has to sign some paperwork every six months. Or if they change the order, maybe they increase um, the formula or increase the amount that they're taking. Um, then we'll have to adjust that. And we'll see. Yes. The child is not tube fed. Not tube fed. Great question. Excellent question. So you can still get it covered. Um, so that's and that's where the insurance. So Medicaid, everything that I talk about, Medicaid will cover as long as you're within those guidelines. Private insurance, there is a way that you can get it covered, and we have. I personally, in about the last three months, I've done about five to seven appeals. Um, with families to make sure it gets covered. If it's just private insurance, they need to have, if it's a broken down, what we call hydrolyzed formula, amino acids are broken way down to help, uh, to help the stomach absorb it, private insurance has to cover it. It is a, it is a government law. If, what if is it like Pediasure, but because of the dysphagia? Doesn't that will that can qualify. It can Absolutely. So if it's pri in a, in a private insurance, it's private. Or, insurance. That's so, private. We don't have Medicaid. So private. So private insurance. Um, and actually, I'm glad you said that because there is something else I want to talk about of families that can get Medicaid possibly. Um, so private insurance. You we. Like I said, every company will try. Um, if we get an order from whether it's GI or the pediatrician. We'll try to get it covered. We'll probably need what's called a letter of medical necessity. That's for the doctor to take care of. They'll write why they need this. You know, dysphagia is a great code um, that they can use. And, and it's what we call um, a, a billable code um, that sometimes the insurance companies will initially say, no, it's not, it's, we're, not, we're gonna deny it. Um, but then if we, if we appeal it and we write a more, a lengthier letter of medical necessity that I have a copy <laughs> in my email at all times um, because that's something that is very necessary. So have you been able to do it with a kid without a uh, G2? Yes. Really? Yeah, we've, we've been able to get it covered before. Um, it takes a little bit longer, okay. you know, instead of the normal three weeks to possibly a month that it usually takes, mm -hmm. sometimes it'll take a little bit longer. Um, but we've been able to get it covered. Um, it, Every company that I that I know, because I work with the other companies, we've got to um, to work together to get every kid helped. Um, we've I haven't seen one. They're like, mm, we're not going to do that. We you know it's not worth our time or whatever. We're we're all willing to work with with you guys, work with the doctors to help you in whatever way possible. Um, and that's a simple referral from the doctor's office to whatever company they prefer or you guys prefer. Um, so it is a possibility. It could be a primary care physician. Mm -hmm. about the family physician yes okay. it doesn't have to come from a GI um, okay. with the with the PCPs um, primary care oh, provider exactly. they sometimes they need a little bit more help most companies um, that, that provide the formula have a registered dietitian on staff um, there I think there might be two out of like the seven or eight in Austin that don't um, so if, if it's a company that has a registered dietitian usually that registered dietitian is far more than helpful um, to get that to get you guys covered for that um, they'll work with the doctor they'll talk about the correct verbiage they need to use for the letter of medical necessity um, to make sure that that they, you guys get all the help you can get all right um, and I know you guys are new to town I'm not wanting oh, okay. to spend a ton of time on this but just an FYI um, anybody that's new to Texas one of the first things you guys need to do if you haven't already is call and get on the interest list for Medicaid waivers they waive the income so that she can get Medicaid uh -huh. as a secondary. It covers a ton of out-of-pocket expenses. It covers a lot of the stuff that he's talking about. That thousands, that, thousands yes. of thousands like of dollars. Right. Oh, because I thought it was on the Medicaid waiver was like for some services, but not like. 
No, it, it, like it's additional services in addition to the secondary insurance. It's absolutely a huge, huge thing, but there's wait lists for all of them. So call if you haven't, get your name on all the list, and yes, it's a huge, huge benefit. Yeah, and a lot of the stuff thousands about. and thousands of dollars. I don't have any problem with it, you know, and I'm not one of those guys who right, just want to abuse the system. It's your kid. But I exactly. pay for it, but sometimes it's so expensive, we cannot do it anymore. I know. I know. It's just ridiculous. It's so expensive. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It, does not it, it, no. it is. It's, it's expensive. It's yeah. crazy expensive. And, and honestly, that's what these waiver programs are for, right. are for exactly. parents. That, that it's, it's, like you said, thousands of dollars. Um, but there's, there's a complication that most of the families that are on this Medicaid waiver list, you know, they just want one therapy covered. So they're going to try to get on Medicaid. If, if your child is, is complex more than, I, really, I say at least three therapies mm -hmm. plus other things, that's what Medicaid is for. Um, right. It's for you guys. It's not. It's not for the families that that just want right. a free ride. Yeah. No. no it's, I guess. Yeah. No. It's, it's so much money. Yeah. I know. It's, yeah. it's crazy yeah. expensive. Yeah. And getting on the waiver will help tremendously. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Call immediately. Yeah, <laughs> Get that. your name on there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I, I. I'm not gonna. Oh, yeah. Spend a ton no, of time no, no, on that because that's, yeah. that's a ten day lecture. I know. <laughs> At least. But I just want to be sure since I know you guys are new to town yeah, that you know you about that. So Absolutely. Um, so the last thing that that as far as the medical supplies that that we provide, um, talk about the two fed patients, G tube, um, NG tube, uh, GJ, um, which is gastro jejunal, um, mm -hmm. NJ tube. There's all kinds of tubes, um, and so. That one is, is a lot easier to get formula qualified um, because especially if they're what's called NPO, they're not able to eat by mouth. Um, they have to have it through the tube, yeah. whether it's the button or through the nose. Um, that's where that's where insurance will insurances will cover it. However, there have been private insurances that I have worked with and the GI clinic here has been great about helping these families out um, on private insurances not approving the tube fed kiddos and That's and so we very crazy <laughs> um, and so we we've done an appeals process to where they've actually gotten it approved um, later with letters of medical necessity and what's called a peer-to-peer -peer where the insurance medical director calls the doctor and they talk through it of here's why things like that um, that also comes with you know we for that a lot of times it's out of the hospital that that companies will get the referral for it and everyone is set up, they're taught on the pump, whether it's an Infinity, whether it's a Joey, that's a whole other conversation for another day, mm -hmm. all the different types of pumps and everything. Um, and so that's usually set up in the hospital and then followed up by a, a gastroenterologist um, on that side. Um, any questions about any of what we've covered? Okay, no, and feel, good, yeah. <laughs> feel free to reach Thank out to you. whoever, um, anybody you know is, is more than willing to help. Um, you guys t you know, take care of that. Stepping up a little bit um, is what we call the personal care attendant or personal care services, whatever you whatever you prefer. Um, personal care so services is kind of what we consider the umbrella. Um, a personal care attendant is the person that is in the home, and that is for um, what we've seen lately is is any patient that has um, at least two therapies. Could be speech occupational, could be all three disciplines. Um, especially more complex if you have cystic fibrosis, cerebral palsy, anything that happen, has to do with daily activities of living. Um, if there is something that is hindering that child from that, then some private insurances and, and definitely Medicaid will help out in getting an attendant for, could be 20 hours a week, could be 40 hours a week. We've seen higher, um, just depends on how complex the, the kiddo is. Um, and now they are unskilled. It is not a, a nurse. It could be a CNA. Um, what we've seen a lot that's been very helpful to families and very successful is a family member who is already probably helping out, whether if it's not the primary caregiver, uh, whether it's grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, cousin, as long as they're 18 or older and they go through a training, every company requires a training for it, um, then they can become the care attendant and then that person is reimbursed for taking care of them. Um, which is a really cool thing to see when you go into the home or if they're coming out of the hospital, these families that you say, so was anybody take care, taking care of them before? Yeah, my mom was. Oh, okay, um, did she ever get paid for it? Well, no, she's my mom. 
we, we can help with that. Um, it's not a lot, you know, the reimbursement is not great, um, but if they were taking care of them, it's better than free. Um, so we, we try to help out with that as much as possible. Companies will hire um, people for it, but because of the low reimbursement, um, the margins, you know, at the end of the day, it is still a business. And some of these companies, it's hard to find someone because a lot of times Whataburger will pay more. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of times these, these care attendants that aren't just family members, they're working with that company because they want to work for them. It's for the kids, for sure. Um, so you, you don't you don't get you don't really get bad care attendants because they really are there for the kids. Um, and they do love working with them. And so same thing that is a referral from the PCP from a specialist if if that's who uh, sees it. I know Dr. Ravenscroft over at can I say doctor's name? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That wasn't a guideline. As long as you're not trashing a doctor. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, she can say good, she, she's good great. She's over it. she's over the Specially for Children Developmental Clinic. Um, and she they see kiddos that, that have that have had developmental issues and she's very um, on top of it as far as saying, Hey mom, do you, would you like some help? Um, so, you know, they they really want to help the kids and, and they've done a great job with that as well. Um, so it's a simple referral. What happens is if it's Medicaid, then, then the company will make sure that Medicaid is active and then it's a quick process from the case, a case manager with that insurance company coming out, taking a look, making sure that everything is accurate as far as, you know, there is this developmental delay, there is this other diagnosis going on. Um, that's hindering them from act normal activities of daily living and then they'll provide the number of hours that they feel is necessary whether it's 20 40 60 however many they think you get weird numbers like 47 um, which 47 47 yeah. is better than 40 <laughs> at the end of the day um, one question that might be asked it, about that is can if you have nursing services which we'll get to in a, in a second can you also have a care attendant at the same time the answer is yes one is clinical, i.e. LVN, RN. The other one is non-clinical. So whereas the nurse, whereas the nurse is there to help with the feeds, administering medication, anything clinical with that child, and they can help do the dishes for that child, the care attendant can help around the house, making sure that the house is, is more safe um, for the nurse and the child to be moving around. Because it is great for the nurse to help pick up, um, to make sure that he or she, whenever they have the baby, or young child is walking that no one slips, but it's really tough when you're trying to watch the kiddo and clean up at the same time. So the care attendant's very helpful. But usually in that scenario, you have a lot of hours for the nurse and very few hours for the PCS. Right, yeah. right, absolutely. So so normally what families will do is, is usually the nurse is able to, to take care during a certain number of hours, and then the care attendant is there maybe overnight um, to watch them, make sure that they're you know, getting good sleep, or if you got one that was like me when I was a kid, waking up in the middle of the night, running around the house, you know, hey, let's get back to bed, um, things like that, that's where they're helpful as well. Um, so that's just a referral, verifying benefits if it's private insurance, making sure that that is something that they will reimburse us for, um, and then with Medicaid, making sure they're eligible, getting the case manager out there to do it. But uh, private insurance, they cover both nurse and care attendants, or, or they can. So the funny thing about private insurance, it all depends on the plan. Um, you can have one family who is Blue Cross Blue Shield and they'll cover this, 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 and this, and another one who is also Blue Cross Blue Shield and they only get two things covered because it's a difference in plan. So that's, that's where the verification of benefits comes in. Um, every company has a specialist outside of the office, probably at their corporate office, who does that all day. They talk with insurance companies, can't, God bless them for doing that because I couldn't handle it. Um, talking with insurance all day is, is rough. Um, so. I've done that. Exactly. It is I imagine. Horrible. Right. I, it is horrible. I know enough about insurance to get me in trouble, and that's all I need to do. Um, don't want to get too much into it because someone else specializes in it, and I appreciate them <laughs> very much. Um, so, the next thing I want to talk about is therapy. Um, now, if someone can name me, what is a discipline of therapy that you know of? What? Occupational. Physical. Physical. Perfect. And, and what's the last one? Occupational. Occupational. Speech, speech therapy. therapy. Perfect. So I've got, Ooh, got a, a hot cold pack, a cup that changes colors to purple, <laughs> or just a pen. 
<laughs> Everybody can get a pin if you want. <laughs> Which one do you want? <laughs> these are these are hot yeah, sellers, thanks. so yeah. so I don't blame you. Yeah. And they're purple. Um, and they, you can freeze them or put them in the microwave for 20 seconds, so it's great. Pull it back when you're playing softball or something like that. Um, good. So speech occupational physical therapy. Those are the main three that you see. They also have music therapy. There's um, uh, ABA therapy for behavioral things. Um, some of which can and cannot be covered by insurance. That's <laughs> that's any any parent who's gone through all of those is like We've got uh -huh. a, yeah. a different Tuesday talk that's online for that too. Perfect. Can go back to. <laughs> Perfect. That's a great one. Yes. That um, so, but the main three that that insurances will work with, um, you know, will approve billing codes for are physical occupational speech. So for those, just to, as a, an example, um, speech therapy d covers two things actually, which I didn't know until I started working with Epic. Um, I just thought it was speech, but they also do swallowing as well. So if there are any feeding issues where they're not creating the bolus to push the liquid back, um, if they're pushing it back and it, they're aspirating, getting it in their lungs, there are speech therapists to help with that. And so um, those are the two things you see. Articulation is what we call just speaking in general. And then feeding and swallowing is the other one. Um, you might hear the word dysphagia. That means not able to swallow. The only reason I knew that starting w when I did three years ago um, was because my sister-in-law is a speech pathologist. It's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, I know that one. Um, so that is, uh, those are our therapies that a, again, primary care provider can, can uh, can get you guys set up with, or um, it's also for a specialist, um, gastrointestinal, has a lot of the feeding kiddos that they'll need, um, they'll need to refer out for the feeding issues. Um, a lot of times, if there is, if there's a feeding issue, a lot of times formula is gonna come with it, um, just cause it's, they're kind of one in the same. Um, if, you, if there's a, an issue with swallowing, there's probably an issue with the texture, um, whether it's hamburger meat or bread or whatever, it's tough to swallow. And so Pediasure or any other kind of PO formula um, is, is what's gonna come with that. Um, occupational therapy kind of does daily activities of living, uh, writing, uh, what, what our occupational therapists say, it's playing. They get to play with kids all day. Um, that's what it is, you know, making sure that they're able to do uh, use their fine motor skills and things like that. Um, physical therapy is another one to where it's mobility. Um, so it might be either they, they need to be stretched out, um, I, massages, which I would love, um, that'd be great, um, but also balance and things like that, making sure they're walking correctly and, and everything, um, their gait and things like that. So the way that works from, from referral to first treat or start of care, doctor sends a referral to a company. Um, I'll give you guys two different examples because, as always, private insurance and Medicaid work differently. Very different. <laughs> um, <laughs> private insurance, when, when we get it, it's got to be a verification of benefits again to see if that is a covered benefit. Um, there are certain diagnosis codes with certain insurances that are not covered. Um, unfortunately, doctors can't make up diagnosis codes. If they don't exist, they don't exist. Um, but they definitely look into every possible um, reason for for kiddos to to get the therapy because they need help um, private insurances the general ones like developmental delay speech delay are very tough to get covered there has to be the more specific the better mm -hmm. um, so we taught I've gone into pediat pediatrician clinics a lot and said hey do you have a more more specific diagnosis than speech delay what are they doing wrong was there an injury in the past to where they are not able to you know, to have the, where they're having the speech delay. Yes, they had a concussion or something like that. Okay, that can be a qualifier. Um, we make sure that that, that that is a covered benefit because the last thing that any company wants to do is say, yep, you're good to go. And then all of a sudden you get stuck with a bill that you weren't aware of. Um, the other thing is a lot of times it comes with a copay. We want to make sure that you guys know that your what your copay is because if you, if we tell you one thing and it's something higher, not gonna be too happy. If it's lower, you're good, you're good with it. Like, don't ask, don't tell. Um, but if it's higher, you have every reason to, to be upset. That's so that, the first question I always ask. Absolutely. What's the copay? Yep, yeah. absolutely. What's the copay? That is, that is the best question to ask. Um, absolutely. They add up. Yeah. Absolutely. They add up quickly. 
Um, so that, that can take up to three days depending on how fast insurance gets back to the company. Um, usually it's a 24 hour turnaround, but depending on the time of year, um, with school coming back and stuff, these kiddos are getting the physicals, it can, they can get bogged down. Um, once that happens, uh, once we, the benefits are verified or eligibility with Medicaid is checked and ran, if they are eligible with Medicaid, meaning active, um, then we can proceed to setting up an initial, what's called an initial valuation. Um, and so there are some private insurances that don't require a verification to get an initial evaluation. Those are the ones we love. We love those plans because that just, that cuts down the time to where we can call parents and say, hey, when can we schedule this? This is when our therapist is available. What about your schedule? Um, so the initial evaluation is strictly where a therapist will come out. They will evaluate initially um, based on their their tests that they have and that is a great question for a clinical person if you want to know what tests they use because my history degree doesn't qualify me for that one um, but every every most therapists use the same type of test um, that way it's all very relative to, to what, what from one company to another and doctors can understand it once they perform they perform the initial evaluation they will write it up that can take up to two days because the packets are about five to seven pages thick and and they'll send it to the doctor and will and send it to the insurance insurance gets it just so it's on on paper that this is what has been seen in the initial evaluation however the doctor's office has to sign it and then we have to send it to the signed plan of or called a plan of care uh, the initial evaluation has to be sent to um, insurance as well that can take a week um, for them to review it and check it. That is with private insurance or Medicaid. Either way, someone is gonna review it. They have a clinical person looking over it. This is why they think they need it. This, these are their goals that they want them to meet in the three or six month period, depending on what that insurance requires. There are different periods of how long the authorization is for. Um, once they say, yes, we think that would be good for the child, they will give us an authorization for three months, six months, some can do nine months or a year, um, but your, your typical range is six months. Um, once we get that, that authorization, then we're ready to schedule. Um, so that can, yes, ready to schedule consistently in the home. Now, a lot, quick talk, but really this take, the industry standard is about 50 days for all this to get done. Because once at the doctor's office, um, the doctor is gonna have to sign it and depending on the clinic you're at, there are a lot of patients that get seen. Um, I know a lot of kiddos at the conference, I think the comprehensive clinic sees 600 kiddos. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of kids. So, um, you know, that's a lot of signing for any of the providers there. And, and I, I think they do a great job mm -hmm. um, with getting that stuff back because four providers, 125 kids each, that's rough. That's what I'm making. Um, Dr. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you see a lot of kids, yeah, she's, she's great. We work with, Bert, with Dr. Burhani a okay. good bit. She's, yeah, I mean, all of them are good. Nurse <laughs> practitioners are, and, and Dr. Rosenblum. Yeah. Um, so, so the industry standard is 50 days. Now, that does include Medicaid. Medicaid will take a little bit longer. Usually private insurance is a little bit shorter um, on the time frame that they will give. All depends on when things are processed. Um, when when the doctor signs, you know, when your schedule is able to fit the therapist's schedule. Um, if it's in-home, that's a tough one to do because it might be after school, it might be daytime, is the therapist gonna be in that area because these therapists don't really get, they don't, they don't get paid a whole lot for mileage. Um, so they wanna make sure that they're not driving Pflugerville down to South Austin, back up to Round Rock make it worth their time. We like to put them in clusters so they can make, you know, hit the, make sure that they get taken, the family's taken care of as fast as possible. Um, so about 50 days is what you're looking at. It can always happen sooner, um, but definitely I'd like to tell the families it's gonna be at least a month um, just because of insurance requirements. Um, any questions about the therapies? So, kind of, so like if you're in a PPCD program, if you're, um, in a daycare, they can actually go to the daycare center. They can go to, you know. Besides the therapy that they're already receiving mm -hmm. there? No, they don't usually go to school. If it's a public school, Correct. they will want you to use the school services, exactly. sure. which have completely different goals. Uh -huh. right. But if you're in a daycare that's not actually a school, it's just a daycare, okay. right. they will go to the daycare, the daycare centers. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, uh, great point. So independent school districts, public schools, they don't allow it because they have their own programs. That's another conversation. We're not supposed right, to say that's, anything. Yeah, that's, that's a, a, that's a conversation, conversation we can have, you can have with other families, you can have with me. There, there are things that go on there that, you know. Um, but you can also get, get the therapies in addition to it, the private yes. therapies. Yeah. So if they do go to school all day, you can still get them after school as well. A lot of doctors recommend it um, just because a lot of times you're going to get seen about, your child's going to get seen once a week um, at, these, at the school, and a lot of times it's group settings. So that's a little bit tough, um, you know, to see any improvement and any extra that is allowed by insurance. Well, and summers and holidays and all that stuff as yep. well. You're gonna, you know, you don't always want to have a lapse during summer break, and so right. having the third party to pick up the slack when there is no school is kind of a big deal as well. It's a big deal, of course. And there are always families that they're like, yeah, it's in in school therapy is fine. When summer comes around, we'll get, you know, we'll pick this company up and get it two, three times a week in the home or in the clinic. Um, that's absolutely acceptable. And then when school starts back, they're discharged from that company and they go back to school. Um, and do the school therapists, they bill your insurance company? Mm -mm. That's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no, no, there's, there's gray area there. To, to, make it, to make it easy, no. Um, but technically, yes. They, they are billing, but there's no copay on your right. part. It's, but the insurance company, they have a maximum for, for Right, therapy, so and so you don't spending. have to sign the paper at the school that allows them to send it to your insurance. You can deny sign that, and they will still give your child the services in the school, but they won't be able to bill you because you didn't sign that paper. So I always tell people, don't sign the paper. Don't sign Yeah. yeah. It's really, because I, I probably shouldn't say this on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It's because they yes. pay maximum. And exactly. Then they're going to finish at school and I could not receive services at Right, home. exactly. And especially when you're not able to get services year-round because once you turn three, you go into the school system that's not year-round. And so, yes, I typically tell people, and I'm not... <laughs> I'm not you. I'm don't, not seeing people bother, like professionally. Don't bother me. Just as yeah. another mom, I tell people when they ask you to sign the paper to bill your insurance, just say no. Okay. There, speaking of the maximum visits, if you get a letter of medical necessity from the doctor, that company can submit it to insurance and get an extension. An extension, mm -hmm. yeah. And you can get but more. They told me that sometimes it gets difficult because they want to see the progress notes. Right. And it's all exactly. these different therapists and overlap. And they have different goals. The right. goals in the school and the goals out of school are very different. Mm -hmm. So, were you about to say something? So, <laughs> do you recommend not signing off the Medicaid number to the school? I I never would with Casey. I always okay. said no, just because th there were so many things that we really had to get done, whether it was nursing or therapy or whatnot, separate of school, that I didn't want it to cloud you know, if everybody's billing from different things, I didn't want it to cloud our, our bucket of hours, and I just I couldn't take that risk, and so I didn't sign off on any of it. Oh, yeah, they still receive the services, and I think schools are used to it because, you know, there's lots of parents that just, no, I, I don't want to sign off on that, and they still give you kids the services. Yeah. So, I, and especially with Medicaid, too, they can say, well, you're already being, you know, they can pull the card of, hey, this, even though the school isn't an actual company, they're still being seen by another therapist, you can't, you can't double dip. And they'll, they'll deny services. And so, yeah, I, if you just tell them in your IEP meeting when they ask you to sign that. I can't remember if I did. I remember the, I can have the visual in my head. Yeah. And if you signed it, I mean, it's, it's not always a huge deal. You can always revoke it, exactly. It just at your next IEP meeting, yeah. if they ask you to sign it again, just say, you know, I, I don't want to do that. There's, you know, a potential yeah. that I could lose hours, I could lose services. Okay. I'm going to decline. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's, Excellent question. Yeah. It's a tricky, tricky thing. The schools are... Insurance They, they in really do God care. <laughs> the people in the schools want the best for your kids, but their hands are tied because of financial things. Yes. And it's, it's, all, it, it's all about money. It's all about money. It's all about money. money. Mm -hmm. So, Honor and roll. Um, so the last thing that I want to bring up is is what's called private duty nursing. Um, a lot of people think that it's private pay, and it is not. 
could be, <laughs> um, but but for most people, it's it's not. Um, we will companies will run the run through the insurance um, with private insurance. Let me back up qualifications. That's the best way, place to start. Now there are some insurances, private insurances, that if there are enough diagnoses that make it very tough, lots of seizures, um, maybe continuous oxygen, even no feeding tube, there have been patients that have gotten qualified for it. It's always an option. You can always check and see. Um, what private insurances do is they base their they base their authorization on medical necessity. Is it necessary? for a nurse to be out there, i.e. how much money are we gonna spend on a nurse compared to if they go in the hospital a lot? That's really, that's the bottom line, is how much money are we spending? Because that's what insurance is always thinking about. Um, so if they see, if there are you know multiple hospitalizations, unplanned, you know, if it's surgeries, that's planned, unplanned hospitalizations for whatever, they might say, yeah, we'll help out 40 hours a week in school or something like that because in school they can get sick easier maybe stuff has happened at school to where they've had to go to the emergency room who knows um, your your main qualifications that that will that will approve you for private duty nursing um, minimal is either is some kind of feeding tube either G button less the NG tube um, because NG tubes are seen as not not permanent or, excuse me let me let me rephrase not long term because mm -hmm. um, because G buttons we always feel are never permanent yeah. um, we because that's what speech therapy is for at some point I feel the speech therapist is gonna do a great job and get them to graduate from the button doesn't always happen um, but it, it is more it is far more long-term than an NG tube just as an example NG tubes are about maximum six months if there hasn't been enough progress in six months a lot of times the doctors will say to, to keep from skin breakdown, either in the, no, in the nose, going down the esophagus. Um, they'll say, let's, let's put a G button there. That way it's just safer for their skin integrity. Um, plus if they're playing with the NG tube a lot, having to drop it again, it's, it can be a hassle. Um, so the G tubes are, are the, one of the minimum qualifications. Um, also the tracheostomies and then ventilator dependency as well. Um, so those those are kind of the main three you're gonna four excuse me you're gonna see um, any kind of naso gastric tube or NJ naso jejunum um, or the G button and tracheostomy ventilator dependency those will will get you the, the qualifications um, where where insurance will very seriously consider it any extra diagnoses that a child has that will just qualify for more hours so if it's G button with three or four medications. If you're looking at 40 hours, give or take. Um, I've been in the industry three years, so it's always up to the nursing director um, to decide. There are things that I do not see because I am not clinical, um, but I can always give parents an idea. Um, if there's seizures, that's gonna increase the potential for hours. Um, any other diagnosis, cerebral palsy, cystic fibrosis, spina bifida, anything extra will get will increase hours. A lot of times what you see are babies that are out of the NICU that are tracheostomy ventilator dependent with a G button is 168 hours, which is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now that's what's authorized, just so everyone knows. That doesn't mean insurance will pay it. Correct. <laughs> well, if, if insurance authorizes oh, it. Oh, okay. Just, I thought you meant that's what the doctor ordered. Right. right. And, and same thing. Doctors can order whatever they want, but insurance can look at it and go, mm -mm, we're not going to. Insurance has the, op the option to say yes, no, or no, but we'll give you this many hours. Um, so if, if, for instance, a child has had a G tube for five years and they've never had nursing before, but now they want it in the school, you might ask for 40 hours a week, but the insurance says, well, there haven't been a whole lot of hospitalizations. Mm -hmm. They're pretty healthy. There's an aid at the school. Sick, we'll, we'll give you 20 yeah. or 30 I'm, hours. I'm hide um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So it's always up to insurance. Go ahead. My question is, if yes. the child does not qualify for the nursing, then I can try for the care attendant, right? Nailed it. Those are the two options, mm -hmm. care attendant and nurse? Correct. Okay. Correct. But you say something like the care attendant is the 
are not available has they're not skilled. They're not skilled. They're, they're not skilled. So, yeah. so they didn't go to nursing school. And they're not paid as much. And since they're not paid as much, it's harder to find people that want to do that job. So it's more easy to find nurses than care attendants. Correct. Uh, well, not that's not totally correct either. Because nurses, nurses are, so the agencies will have more nurses, more nurses than attendants. So when you go through an agency, that's technically true. But, but you have to pay them more. Well, they have to pay them more, but then there's also finding the nurse that's available for the hours that you need. Correct. And that's that's sometimes a challenge because as well. Because the shine does not qualify because of, it doesn't have the minimum. Like the exactly, G2. because you take care of the child, so she's not going to need, she's going to, she's not no, going to be needing a G2. So that's right. what's happening with our daughter. You know? Right. Yeah. But so, if in our case, for example, yeah. if we try to get a, a attendant, mm -hmm. that would be more difficult because less availability of... It's it's just less people want to do it because it's paid. Right. It's a low paying but job. But anyhow, yeah. I can ask the physicians to for the referral. Sure. And you can ask the physicians to write a letter of medical necess necessity for a nurse. You know, even though she doesn't have a G tube, if if there's enough other diagnosis and medications and risk and all of those other things, they can try. I mean, sure. it never hurts but to try. The physician, if the physician wants to try first, they attend them. The referral has to say. Attend, attend them, not, not nurse? Correct. So, yeah, so it would be like attend, referral for attendant care. And, and they could put a number of hours per week. If they want to try 50, attendant care for 50 hours a week. Okay, so the physician has to specify if it's mm -hmm. nurse or... Correct. Doctor. Or attendant. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll talk in the next basic. Exactly, that's very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. yeah. The point Absolutely. is that, you know, sometimes you take it good care of your... And then you get penalized for it. You get, exactly. Yeah, right. you but, you know, Seizures yep. are under control. That's good. Right. Under control. That's bad because... Exactly. It's too bad <laughs> because you cannot qualify. get an exact. She doesn't yeah. qualify. Yeah. Right. Because this baby it takes us basically three, four hours a day to feed her. I mean, her mom is doing that. Because she doesn't have a G-tube. She right. doesn't have a G-tube, and then she's in a good way. But, you know, I don't want to put a G-tube no. just to get a nurse. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No. I know. Right. It's, we don't want that. I know. It's, it's but, a... But it would not be bad to have an attendant that right. at exactly. least I could go take a shower and eat because exactly. sometimes I can not even do it. 24-7. Right. 24-7, you know. Yeah, it's service. But I can talk to the doctor for honey mm -hmm. and see if she can write a she and she attendant. absolutely will. They're, they they have a lot of kiddos that have attending care. Mm -hmm. okay. I they just started, I just only had one appointment with her. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> talk about all right. the services, but now that I know, in yep. my next appointment, I will ask her about the attending. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because I know that for the nurse, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Since she exactly, because and she's taking care of. I don't want to try something that I know they're going to say no. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah, I know. It's it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to get help. But then once you get help, it's like, oh my gosh, why did I wait so long? I should have called and gotten help two years ago. The, the only yeah. problem is you don't know what you don't know. I know. And that's you know, which is which is great for things like this. Um, th I mean, thank goodness. That's what we do this for. Exactly. <laughs> absolutely. Let's make sure everybody knows what's out there. Um, so yeah, so insurance can approve, deny, or deny, and then have less hours. Now, what some families think is that oh I'm approved for 120 hours a week we're gonna get staffed that not always the case um, unfortunately I mean coming from a company that, that does that any parent that asks me so I'll get a nurse there 120 hours a week I'll get a nurse there 40 hours a week can't promise it because unfortunately we don't have any robot nurses nurses do get sick nurses do have kids that get sick they move they decide that they're, you know, they're going to go to either a different company or the hospital, which I can't blame them, <laughs> you know, um, if they, because the hospitals offer more money, um, you know, that, so just because a family is, is authorized for that many hours doesn't mean that I would gar ever guarantee that that's how many hours they're, that they're going to be staffed each week. Um, it is... That is one of the reasons that at the hospital, whenever a kiddo gets either a G-tube, their tracheostomy ventilator dependent, the parents do the room in. Um, you know, either a one or two night room in, depending on the, all the equipment that goes with it, because at some point, the parent is gonna be in charge. And any case manager that says, yeah, you're not gonna have to worry about it, that's, that's not true, they're, they're pulling your leg. 
Um, so, so unfortunately, you know, it's, it's not a perfect system as far as, you know, nurses have every right to call out and say, Hey, I slept in, I'm just not going to come in. They can say, I got a flat tire. I got to get my car fixed, whatever it might be. Companies do work as hard as they can to staff that, to staff that family. It, they are going to make a call to every nurse on their roster, but not all nurses are ready to go. Well, and I mean, for us specifically, like when, when we had Casey, if a nurse called out, we didn't want somebody off the roster because it took weeks to learn how to take care of Casey. And so we didn't right. want just any nurse to come fill in. So it's like, well, no, that nurse is going to be more trouble than me taking care of Casey by myself. And so sometimes that's a great solution. Sometimes for some families it's not. There's, yeah, I mean, it's every kind of family. I've, I've seen it both ways. Hey. Get me somebody. I need. Uh, right. You know, I've got to go help. to work. I got to get somebody here. Right. I mean, some people, there's not an option. Um, and, and then sometimes it's. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I will just do this myself. Yep. Don't send me anybody. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I better do it. Um. So <laughs> it is. It is nice to have the help when you can. Um. But but don't you know? I just, I just always prepare families. Don't don't expect that to happen at all times yeah. because people. People are human. Yep. He's like, you don't get too spoiled. Yeah. Right. Well, and, <laughs> no, and if you have true, something you know. like some big event coming up, like we had a wedding that we wanted to go to at right. one point. And so we had a nurse that was on the schedule for Casey, and we had another nurse that was back up in case that nurse called out because it was like we had to travel for this wedding. We had another nurse in case that nurse called out. All three of them dropped the ball. No. <laughs> we didn't go. No. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it happens, you know, and we, we made sure we had three levels back, right. and it just it didn't work. Um, so, yeah, when it's a big thing, you, you line them up and you do all you can. But for example, we don't have family here. We, yeah. can, we can only the three of us, so I exactly. cannot call somebody to, to come to my sister or my mom. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. But I, that's part of when you, you know, that's part of this life. You, right. you know that I'm going to cancel a whole lot of things and yeah, all your that's friends and family just deal with it. Yeah, You know, we don't have any problem with that because it's yeah. a different kind of love mm -hmm. and we love our baby. So, yeah. but it's good to have a little bit of help once yes, in a while. Absolutely. absolutely. Considering that you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars yep. for something that's not even worth $200. You know, right. because it's all about business. We yep. just talked about it. Yep, and so that that actually brings me to my my last thing I want to talk about. It's actually not related to any of those services, in, in a roundabout way. I mean, I guess it is. So that's the Medicaid waivers. So there's always the options. You can get on the wait list. You can do the buy-in. Um, the one that I that I've do what? I always forget about the buy-in. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so, so where you pay a little bit to have Medicaid, things like that. There is a copay and stuff. That's another. You know, that's a whole conversation offline <laughs> um, that you could have with with somebody. Um, but one, one that I've come across, so when I first started with Epic, I worked in North Houston in the Spring Woodlands Con Conroe area, very affluent neighborhoods. Um, and it was a lot of private insurance for these kiddos that had feeding tubes, seizures, cerebral palsy, things like that. There is a, a waiver called the Rider 28. Um, money follows the person now. Yeah, well, yeah, slash money follows the person. <laughs> they changed the name. Um, and so, and, and it gives you a, a list of six diagnoses, um, or seven now, because hospice yeah, is on there too, okay. um, of ways you can get it. The, the few of them. <laughs> uh, one is hospice, 24 hour oxygen, um, seizure activity, consistent seizure activities um, daily um, can be. It doesn't have to be daily. I've seen it to where they kind of go, okay. Um, but seizure activity, feeding tube, tracheostomy, ventilator status, renal, oh, there's more, <laughs> renal failure, um, and also um, autoimmune deficiency. Um, so if any of those, what are we at, eight now? Nine? Math is not my favorite. Um, eight or nine qualifications that you can apply to that. Um, that has been used multiple times by myself to get these families help. You don't have to wait in the line. So the five-year wait list, right now they call it money follows the person. Yeah. And it's only for MDCP. It's not for all the waivers. It's only for medically dependent, medically dependent child care program. Um, but that's, that's the one most people start with is the MDCP program. And so what it is is really the Medicaid, the actual wait list is about 10 years. Depending on, before you get too scared, depending on depending on the complications, you can be bumped up in front of other people. 
right. like I said, people are on there because their child is getting speech therapy for a speech delay. More important, higher up the list. Um, but the longest I've seen the Rider 28 money follows the person take is three months. And, Very fast. And so, so you get on that. Rider 28. Yeah, and, and I've, I've actually I can I've got some in my car I can oh, bring it to you cool. um, and I, it's got so and it's, it's unfortunately it's parent driven um, so you guys have to stay on top of it right. which shouldn't be a problem no, <laughs> you know I mean most of the families are like duh um, but that's just saying you know your therapy company can't call your DME company can't call and do it it has to be done by you guys and and all that is is they'll do like a pre screening over the phone where. A case manager will talk to you and ask questions make sure that your child could qualify for it then they'll set up a, di a day a week or two later maybe to come out and see them could be longer than that just depends on their availability and then when they whenever they come out and see your child then they'll set up a date to where your child will stay in a nursing facility um, overnight you stay with them you stay you stay with them before yep. you freak out you stay with you the stay child. with them and it's and it's not it's not really overnight it's like check in at nine ten o'clock you get discharged at five six o'clock the next day uh, so morning, eight, nine, yeah, it's, yeah it's nine ten o'clock p.m. Okay. you get discharged early the next morning but as far as they're concerned it's October 17th to October 18th mm -hmm. that's all they see yeah. and technically it's supposed to be 30 days but a doctor will write a letter saying right. that for your child's needs 30 days doesn't really make sense 24 hours makes more sense and so they'll write it for a 24 hour period you'll check in you'll check out and when you leave you have Medicaid as your secondary insurance and you are on the waiver yep are you guys on the waiver yeah. yeah, yeah, we did it the the back yeah, door this way too. Like yeah. <laughs> oh, that's even better. Yeah. Well, I've heard people now, they're there for like an hour. I'm like, man, they made us stay for like 10 hours. Oh, but, really? But that was a long time ago. <laughs> was a long time ago. They used to do it in the hospital. They'd discharge them for a day, go stay in there and readmit them. Oh, I wish they it was the hospital. They can't do that anymore. Yeah, no, we had to go to Copper's Cove. Did you guys do Copper's Cove? Temple. Temple? Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, but they didn't have Temple when we went. Otherwise, I would have done that. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Was it? Yeah, it's it's not a fun night, um, but it's totally worth it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally worth it. So, does anybody have any questions? I have two questions. What are what is one of the services that we talked about tonight? Nursing. Nursing. Private would you nursing. would you like private duty nursing? Would you like a cup? Would you like a hot gel pack? Hot cold pack. <laughs> Those are a hot seller. What is? Yeah. <laughs> And what is a what is one of the services that we provide, um, or that is provided? Sorry, I forgot. Um, the therapies. Therapies. Mm -hmm. Cup or hot cold pack. The cup. The cup. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. Absolutely. This is Thanks for having fantastic me. Fantastic information, and hopefully Thank everybody. Thank you. Yeah, we're very helpful. What areas do you cover in Austin? So me personally. Oh, the Oh, so we cover Georgetown down to San Marcos, and then like Marble Falls over to um, Bastrop, Elgin area up that way. Big area. Yeah. We are we are not near so long. I don't know, like for example, um, Sleeping Spring. That mm -hmm. part is covered too. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely, and and there's there's lots of companies that that will cover all areas. I mean, it's you know. When you see, you know, if they, you have any questions about any companies, talk to Dr. Burhani. Comprehensive Clinic is very, in, like, very well connected with the special needs community. They can probably tell you, I mean, their social work team is great. They can tell you about a lot of stuff going on, whether it's events or, you know, specific services um, for your kids. And the great thing now that we're th now I'm thinking about the comprehensive clinic, they have their own dietitian, and you could ask Dr. Burhani and say, hey, is there a way we could get a letter of medical necessity um, written by the dietitian signed by Dr. Burhani? Exactly. I have my first appointment with the, di the dietitian this Friday. Perfect. Okay. So her name's Alyssa. I'm, She's great. She came from Dell. Uh -huh. So I will talk to her about the medical necessity for the formula. Sure. Right now we're paying out of our pockets all the pediatrician. Yep. No, we don't want to abuse the system. I, mean, I, I pay, me. I pay, but, but the point is here, that sometimes yeah, you pay so much it. money you yeah. cannot pay anymore. Yep. 
It's so expensive. expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And the waivers are, are set up yeah. for families just like yours and, and mine exactly. was the same way where we just, we have so much out of pocket every exactly. month. Exactly. Because, you know, it's yeah, about business. I don't want other people to pay for my dog. No, I don't no, feel no, like no, that. No. And I don't like that. No. But I know that on the other hand, I realize that unfortunately, mm-hmm. Medicine is a little bit, it's a lot about business too. <laughs> right. And you're spending so much money and sometimes it's just impossible. You cannot right. do it anymore. No, that's 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 not sustainable. Sustainable. Yeah. That's yeah. It's, it's not that's sustainable. Gentle. Don't cry. <laughs> gentle. He's, my He's my little buddy. He's my little buddy. Yeah. Well, well, He's my I'll little buddy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everything. Thank you. Yes.